Hello everyone and welcome to Greg's Garage. I'm Greg White. You know on the show that we love to talk about motorcycle racing, especially when it comes to flat tracks. So let's welcome back to the show, 2012 Grand National Champion, Jared Mees. What's up, Jared? How are you? Oh, great, man. Thanks for having me back on. We would love to have you on. Let's talk about AMA Pro flat track racing because you guys have four rounds in the books and right now uh, you're 22 points behind Kenny Coolbeth. Um, I'm looking at the stats right here and I see that, you know, it's kind of been a little bit of an up and down, but more consistent, a fifth, a 12th, a third, and a fourth annual poll. So tell me about the season, how it's been going so far. You know, like I mentioned before in, in my past interviews, Daytona has always been pretty rough on me uh, over the years. It's just, uh, could be known as a pretty big crap shoot and um, you got to go there and have your guns loaded and not saying we never have our guns loaded, but it's just uh, two consistent finishes back to back and um, we just didn't have it this year with uh, with the finishes down in Daytona. But we moved on to uh, Springfield Mile and had a really good consistent run there at running uh, third and made it in the dash. So was feeling pretty good. Uh, the unrestricted Harley Davidson has definitely made a big difference out there pulling the restrictors out. And then um, we moved on to Knoxville, Iowa, which I was really looking forward to. Uh, we were fortunate enough to race the day after the Word of Outlaw Sprint Cars. And uh, so it was a day clay track race. Kind of a little tough to get the track exactly how uh, we needed it. It, was, it came to be a little bit more one line, but uh, we managed to get a fourth out there. A little disappointing, I'll be honest, because we sat on the pole and um, we were really fast and had a good dash for cash run, but uh, just didn't bang the start that we needed. So um, we're getting pretty busy now. Uh, next weekend is Lima, Ohio, and then uh, we go to Hagerstown, and then we have a really, really busy schedule in the month of August. So uh, getting ready down to the nitty gritty pretty, pretty quick here. Yeah, and anybody can find that information at amaproracing.com and you just go to the flat track link and there's all the races because there are 12 rounds left. Now, interesting note, this morning news came out that the Santa Rosa mile, which was set to be round 15, has been canceled and replaced with Calistoga Speedway. Now, the distinction, they're in the same area, but the distinction is that uh, Santa Rosa was a mile and Calistoga is a half mile. Any real impact on the championship You can you see late into the season? Well, right now, I think the players are uh, definitely Kenny Coolbeth, who is uh, running really strong this year. And, uh, you know, Jake Johnson's up there. Um, Sammy Halbert's in front of me in third. Uh, you know, me and Jake and Coolbeth are all strong on the same exact tracks and weak on the same exact tracks with maybe the, the uh, you know, in between the, some of the singles races, which there's not that many. But as far as half miles and miles, the type of surfaces that we both excel on, we're, we're like, you know, we're probably known as the three best groove track riders right now on, on the circuit and probably the three worst cushion riders on the circuit. So uh, for me, I, you know, I like Calistoga, uh, not because of the racetrack versus uh, the cushion versus the groove, but just the atmosphere, the wine country, it's beautiful up there. The racetrack's awesome, it always has been. Santa Rosa just had, uh, a couple black eyes really and, and just uh, the track is just a thoroughbred track it's a sand loamy type of surface we're trying to race it during the day in the middle of california during uh september so it, the heat is just you know 90 to 100 degrees so it's tough to keep the moisture in there but i'm not really sure the logistics of why santa rosa got canceled and calistoga got brought back on but uh, i'm definitely excited that calistoga is back on we always were disappointed to see that one go uh, as well, you know, we want to race motorcycles, there's no doubt, but Calistoga is going to be a lot of fun. Let's go back. You talked about Cool Beth Johnson and Halbert in front of you. Looking at your competition this year, you know, Kenny Cool Beth right now, 17th at the first Daytona, and then he comes out swinging a first, a second, and a first, most laps led in a couple races. You know, what do you think is going on with Cool Beth this year and with your program? I mean, I know there's 12 rounds left, so it's very early in the season, but from where you're sitting, what do you see as the competition in front of you and how they're doing and how they're making adjustments this year? No doubt uh, Kenny Colbeth's um, going to be the big player. Uh, you know, I rode against Colbeth when he was on fire back uh, in 2007, uh, 6, 7, and 8 era, and um, he was a tough competitor. I remember him and I going at it uh, week in and week out, so I know what he's capable of. I think, uh, you know, he switched uh, teams. Him and Brad Baker basically, like, switched rides, uh, switched mechanics. Um, so I think, you know, there's definitely, you know, some, some drive there for Kenny, you know, he, he basically got let go from the factory Harley Davidson team and, and went over to where Brad Baker won the championship. So 
He knows that the motorcycles were, uh, were were ready to go and the mechanic and everything was capable of winning. And as well as Brad, you know, he went to the factory team thinking that, you know, hey, I'm going to I'm going to make some money and, and win some races because their stuff's really good. And, you know, basically they switched rides and it just uh, spiked Coolbeth up. You know, Coolbeth knows that he's kind of getting up there in his career and he's more, I would say, at the end of his career than the beginning. And uh, he wants to go out there and win some championships and races before he's all done. So uh, I feel the cool best going to be the toughest guy as well. Jake has some, uh, some pretty good step, and step this year, and, and uh, I think them two are going to be the big players. Cool. All right, and finally, you know, for people that are watching, where can they see Flat Track races and, and get more information about you and, and get into those races? Well, definitely. You can always check me out on my fan page on uh, Jared Mees Racing on Facebook, uh, Jamie's One on Twitter. You could also check out Flat Track Live on Facebook during the uh, Grand National. She, uh, Miriam, she does a great job updating all the races and stuff. Uh, AMAProRacing.com, AMA Pro Racing on, on Facebook. Um, also, Fans Choice TV is a real big one these days. Uh, you can go there and watch us live. So uh, a lot of ways to uh, keep up on uh, the flat track, that's for sure. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us again, and we'll check back with you in a couple of races and, and see how things are going, man. Look forward to it. Hopefully I'm on top. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for now. Thanks, Jared Mees, for joining us. If you're watching us on the YouTube channel, click on subscribe. We post exclusive stuff on there from time to time. Uh, the Facebook page, well, that's facebook.com slash Greg's Garage TV. Instagram is Greg's Garage. And if you want to follow me personally on Twitter, it's at Greg White. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time right here on Greg's Garage.